The purpose of the course is to prepare people to work in crisis and disaster and violent zones. Analyze what are the risks. Are they RPGs, rocket propelled grenades? What we do, and I, and I think we're probably the only ones that do this, at least in an academic environment, is offer a holistic course that covers four of the main aspects of prevention and preparation. One is obviously your physical planning, your physical safety. They work together as teams and try to figure out what would be the safest way to approach this particular roadblock and even whether they need to go through it or whether they should just turn the car around and go back. These journals that are out there have a very uh, succinct problem list of, of issues that they're facing. 11% of the people who die don't have to because they're bleeding to death. So we do a lot of work on that. And we also work on just general first aid, how to approach a patient uh, to see if they're going to die or not in the next few minutes and if they can intervene in that life threat. I have frequently found myself in situations where I wish I knew more about safety protocol and about uh, medical training about trauma. Freelance journalists covering crisis and conflict of all kinds face extraordinary risks, and not all of those risks are physical. You're going to see a lot of stuff, and you're going to do a lot of stuff, and you can't have that question in your mind as to whether or not you did the right thing. What we do in this course is provide freelancers with a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of background to enhance your resilience, your ability to take care of yourself, your ability to take care of your colleagues when you're on difficult assignments. As a freelancer, when I am in the field, it's because I chose to be there and the responsibility to keep myself safe is on me. Increasingly, there's been surveillance of journalists. Oftentimes, they are physically harmed because they've been followed on the internet. And so what we try to do is teach people skills and tools by which they can protect their computer communications so that they're not tracked. What do you want to do? What's the need to increase? Iran is one of the most repressive countries when it comes to cybersecurity. And the more you learn about it, the more you understand you're very vulnerable in this world. There's so much that I have learned that applies to reporting from hard places um, in general. And so um, this class made more sense for me than some of the other. Um, classes because it deals with sexual assault, because it deals with trauma. The last component, it's physical safety, but it's, there's also a very, very strong um, gender element to it, which is setting boundaries so that you're not physically attacked, and this is particularly important to women. It gives me a sense of confidence and a sense of preparedness. Having that much more control over your environment is going to make you, in the long run, a better journalist. So what we really want to do is just open up people's minds to thinking in a more careful way and preparing their trips before they actually go out there. I rely really, really heavily on friends and colleagues in the field when I'm working and I want them to be able to rely on me too. So the more I know and hopefully the more my colleagues know, the safer we all are.